the board is full with over over 15 senators who are interested in asking for clarifications. I want to propose that we take four on this side and four on the other side. So let's begin with uh, Joe Nyoto, Senator Joe Nyoto. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. I just want to seek very short clarifications from the witness. And the first one is uh, from the evidence of uh, Joseph Misati, the friend. Uh, Misati went to the DG's uh, home accompanied by his sons for that meeting where they had a separate meeting between him and Joseph Misati with the sons at a distance. My, the clarification I'm seeking is why would grown men, the sons, accompany the father to a meeting with a friend to discuss matters that did not relate to the employment of uh, Dennis Misati? That is one. Number two, when the witness sent 100,000 Kenya shillings to uh, the MD of Waso, or Wasco, and he says in his uh, statement that this was sent erroneously. It was supposed to be sent to another lady who is a CEO within uh, Kisi County uh, government. It, it took two days. Would the witness clarify? Because the usual, everyone uh, sending money through M-Pesa is once you send an amount of money, then you will receive a message from M-Pesa uh, detailing whom you have sent it to. Is the witness truthful when he alleges that he did not discover immediately that uh, he had sent the money to the wrong person? And even if he did, he alleges that he was not, uh, he did not have uh, the technical know-how uh, to reverse the transaction. But ideally, uh, Madam Speaker, one would call the person to whom you have sent the money erroneously and request them, especially because this is somebody that is well known to you. Request them to send the money back to you which did not happen until the following day when the MD called the witness herself. Thank you, Senator Newton. Allow the witness to respond. Madam Speaker, <coughs> Mr. Misati Joseph came with his four sons and at my age and his age, we thought, and it's normally the practice, that we leave the children aside and do business of your own. I did not have any special reason to accommodate the children in the discussions we held with Ms. Amisati. When, question two, when we, I sent money erroneously to Lucy, the MD Wasco, I've already indicated that I slept without noticing the error. The next morning, Lucy called me and told me about this money. I asked her to send back the money, but she told me she was already at the airport trying to fly out to Nairobi from Kisumu. And uh, Madam Speaker, I, she asked me to reverse, which I've already indicated I didn't have that technology of reversing the money as uh, that's been indicated. Madam Speaker, when she reached Nairobi, I talked to her and she told me she was entering a crucial meeting she will transact later. On the issue of 
reversing the money. Madam Speaker, I came to learn when I received this statement in this impeachment that it could, it, uh, it was that Lucy, having received the 100,000 from me, immediately after spent 5,000, and therefore it, it did not remain, and I refer the Honorable Senators to that page where Lucy has received the 100,000, and immediately after has drawn or paid out 5,000, reducing the money from the 100,000. I'm guided that if I tried, even if I would have tried, I'm guided by those who know that with less money than what I would have tried to reverse, it could, the reverse would have not been possible. That's my response, Madam Speaker. Uh, Senator Eno Kwambo. Um, Madam Speaker, um, allow me to, to engage the witness. Very briefly, within two minutes, I'm done. Um, His Excellency DG, what is the official title of one Lucy Waito? Official title yes. is CEO. CEO. That's what I know. Some people exchange it with MD. What is the official title? She has a letter of appointment. What is she? Is she an MD? Is she a CEO? Is no, that, that one CEO? I cannot take a position on which okay. title okay, she you can't. holds. You can't. So, but you have, you have saved her as what? Chief officer? I've saved her as CEO. Chief officer. Yes. And you're saying you made a mistake between... Um, Lucy and Gladys Amiga. Yes. What is the connection in the typing for either Lucy or Guasco, whatever it is, and Gladys and Amiga? Because you have to type for the name to pop up. What is the connection in the keyboard of your phone? Because they are all the same. What is the alphabetical ordering of either of those names? When you look at what we have attached there. Um, Lucy and Gladys are next to each other. Yeah, but you have to type. You have to type the name to, for the name to pop up. I've indicated, uh, Madam Speaker, earlier that uh, I have tried to save staff of the county <laughs> under an easier way of uh, accessing them, and that's why I have the CEO, my own way of accessing, easily accessing the officers you know, of you know, the Madam, county. You know, Madam Speaker, we need your protection because I think uh, from Kisi County, there are very many different ways of doing things. Now, this one has a different way of typing names on the keyboard, which is standard. It's a standard keyboard. When, when you type GWA, What's the connection between GWA and GLA? I've, I've, typed, I've indicated, Madam Speaker, that have the way of CEO would bring all okay. the officers. I will ask the case, rest yeah. of the names will follow. The, the next question, Madam Speaker, so that we save on time. That should be the last, the last question, yes. Yeah. The last question. You erroneously, as you say, sent money to, to Lucy. Um, and you don't recognize, realize that you have sent money until the following morning, which is questionable. But that morning, you are called by Lucy and she says, you, what did you send this money to me for? So at least you know now there is 100,000 shillings that you sent to Lucy, which is your money. True. But you go to the bank and withdraw 130,000 shillings to send to some other people, and yet you have your money that is already with Lucy, which you can access and use for the same purposes. Why was it easier for you? You are saying you're not tech savvy, but you're able to withdraw money from the bank. You're not able to reverse money that you have sent. Are you being selective in your tech savviness? 
Madam Speaker, I'm not being selective. If you read my statement correctly, the money I sent to Lucy was in my M-Pesa, and the money I sent that morning, Lucy told me I have sent her money, was still in the same M-Pesa, so I didn't go to the bank to draw any other money. I had some money. The money is not in your person now. It is in Lucy's phone. It's not in your own person anymore. You I'm saying already. I had more money in my account that could be enough to send another hundred thousand. I didn't send one hundred thirty thousand to Gladys. It's a hundred thousand to Gladys. After I discovered Lucy had taken a hundred that she had not refunded or returned. Ma Madam Speaker, I'm okay. Thank you, Senator. Senator Gloria Ruba. In under one minute, and senators, if we could reduce our questions to only two, it will help because there are very many senators who are interested in clarifying. Thank, thank you, Speaker. I only have two questions. Speaker, on the first one, um, when Joseph Misati was here and he was questioned on your, his relationship with you uh, on a business level, he said at one point that uh, you had an Impesa shop. I just wanted you to clarify do you have you at any one point had an Mpesa shop? And if so, would that then conflict that you do not know how to operate Mpesa, particularly reversals? Then my my second question is that um, on the assembly bundle uh, page two eighty three and two eighty seven, it is stated that uh, the deputy governor was buying land at five hundred k per acre which was negotiated down to 200k per acre to help the children. But um, in the sales agreement, it is written that uh, you are to pay 2.8 million by the end of October, uh, which uh, you clarified that you are not able to pay. And then the question is, after that, you actually paid 500,000 to Joseph. So the question is, where did you get the money? because those two are conflicting. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Speaker. Give quick, Madam short Speaker. answers. Uh, I Madam want to Speaker, guide, can sorry? Can I guide the witness? If you could give short, quick answers, it will help us to move faster. Don't give long narration. Uh, Madam Speaker, I've never owned an M-Pesa um, Business, what Mr. Misati Joseph had to in his uh, witness was his own Mpesa business and not business and not mine. Uh, number two, uh, the Honorable Senator has referred to a case that I've also seen in this house yesterday about an elder from Magenja Ward, who was selling land that he had owned in Transmara, Narco County. And the Madam Speaker, she came to me and asked me if I can buy. When I attempted to follow up the documents, I realized this same land had a lot of encumbrances. There were people on that land, I don't know whether I call them squatters or what, and he wanted me to go and use an auctioneer to remove those people and buy that land. At that point, they said, I can't buy a case. I'm, I'm buying land, this land, and no issues, fighting with the people. And at that point, I said, we cancel this deal, Madam Speaker. That's where the story of land uh, rests. Senator Agnes Cavindo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mine is a follow-up question on the m -Pesa to Lucy. Madam Speaker, when he was giving his evidence, he said that he did not know how to reverse the money, and he was looking for somebody to reverse the money for him. And I'm wondering if he looked for someone for two or three days, and he could not get anyone who could reverse that money, uh, even after Lucy had told him that the money was there, and after he had confirmed. Ms. Ma Madam Speaker, this one raises uh, a lot of questions. 
And number two, he talked of uh, not knowing the, uh, his, his best friend's uh, children. And yet when his friend was giving evidence, he said that there is even a time he called him to go and fundraise for the children's school fees. Madam Speaker, uh, I don't understand how I can be called by my best friend to go and fundraise for his, his son or his daughter and I cannot be familiar with the same, same daughter. Thank you. Mrs. Witness, did you... Madam, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I've indicated that uh, Lucy called me on the 29th, the, on the morning of 29th, May. And that is the time there was this conversation on the erroneous uh, sending of money. And uh, she was on a transit. I called her later when I asked her to send me back the money, but she was in a room in a meeting. That is on the same day of the 29th of May. She sent me back the money the next day. So the issue of three days, uh, Madam Speaker, does not arise. It is the next day. The next question. The issue of children. Familiarity of children. Uh, Madam Speaker and uh, Honorable Senators, I'm very good at knowing the faces of people once well exposed to me. When I go to fundraise with my friend, I'm not fundraising with the children, it's the adults whom I fundraise with. We sometimes do these fundraising, all of us, honorable leaders, honorable senators, with the people in the village, the invited guests, and therefore, we may have our children out there, or some in school, some wherever they may be, and I will want to still remain that I cannot identify all the, all the children of all my friends. It's not possible for anyone, uh, and I will be lying if I said that, Madam Speaker. Senator Chadadike. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll be precise with an eye of a military marksman. One, uh, Mr. Deputy Governor, can you table your evidence? Can you table a phone as part of the evidence now so that we can cross-check uh, those numbers that you're talking about, Wahito and Aminga? Number one. Number two, what is your relationship with other leaders in Kisi uh, County? Number three, uh, who ensures that there is proper budgetary utilization of funds in Kisi County? And finally, how do you feel that the father of Dennis, uh, that how do you feel that your brother testified against you? And how do you feel the father testified against uh, the son, Madam Speaker, so that we get uh, the feeling that is happening. And finally, what is your relationship with the, your, uh, the Governor uh, Simbarat? I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, as I respond, I will request that uh, where I'll miss some of the questions, uh, the Honorable Senator will remind me um, for tabling the phone. <coughs> I will request it by your directions, Madam Speaker, that uh, I'd left my phone with my security out here. If the Sergeant at Arms can get the phone for the view by the Honorable Senators. Um, uh, that, that's my request, Madam Speaker. And Sergeant at Arms, you can assist him so he can just open the page where the list of names was downloaded. I have no objection, questions. Madam Speaker, if they can be doing that. Um, my relationship with the KC politicians is the next question. And Madam Speaker, I've been a politician for some time now. And I can confidently say I have very good relationship with my colleagues, politicians in KC. And in circumstances where uh, we do not agree, 
we have sought to solve and make ourselves agree as politicians. Uh, I hope I've answered that. I have a very good relationship with my colleague politicians across the board. Um, on the issue of who ensures the budget of the Kisi counties uh, used, Madam Speaker, this I referred to it earlier, that Madam Speaker, I will say it is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of the county to ensure absorption of resources given by the government, the national government, the budget that you give us from this house is used effectively, Madam Speaker. And so it, that's my affirmment that um, there is a CEO to ensure we spend our resources. Um, on the issue of uh, Joseph Misati and his son, Dennis Misati. Then the situation of my brother and myself. This is very unfortunate, Madam Speaker, that one family will have, <coughs> a fam family members will have to move out of the family circles and come to solve their family disputes in the Senate. It is unfortunate, and uh, I will want you to say here, Madam Speaker, I felt so much embarrassed that a, a member of the of parliament in this uh, ca country will find his way, that's myself, find um, um, some, for some reason, find a reason to come here and uh, talk about family issues in the Senate. It is unfortunate and I regret the situation, Madam Speaker, for both Mr. Chose Misati and his son, and myself and my brother who was here yesterday evening. On the question of my relationship with the, my, my governor, the Honorable, His Excellency, the Honorable uh, Paul Simbarati, I want to make it clear that we have had a strained relationship from the time we came into office on matters that are of issue. And indeed, I'm convicted that it is from that perspective that I am, I am before this Senate today on a matter of impeachment because of the official questions and discussions I've tried to hold with the governor and we do not seem to pull together. One of them, honorable members of the Senate and Madam Speaker, is a question of the budget absorption. Where for two consecutive years, we have remained number 47 out of 47 in resource, development resource absorption. In the first year, we did 13.9% of the resource absorption. In the next quarter, the first quarter of this year, Madam Speaker, this financial year, we have done 1.7% resource absor absorption, and in the in the first half of this year, we have uh, we have done 3.9%, and these Honourable are the areas DG. of. Uh, let me guide you. You should be responding to the question you were asked. I feel you have not responded to it. Respond to that question, please. The last question: your relationship with the DG, if I got it correct. With the, with the governor, your relationship with the governor. Madam Speaker, I'm not hearing you. Maybe if they can raise the, the power for your mic, I can hear you. Your relationship with the governor, that was the last question. 
Madam Speaker, is the same question I'm dealing with that the relationship between me and my governor has been getting deteriorating day in, day out as we moved through the period we've served in the Kisi County. I hope I've answered. Yes, you have. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Asige Kegei Christo. Madam Speaker, sorry. And the, before we take uh, Senator Asige's question, you have the phone now. Open the page which was downloaded and attached to the document. And uh, the sergeant at arms will present it to the secretariat desk, the clerk's desk, and uh, Senator Chiradige can have a look at it. Point of order, Madam Speaker. It is your point of order. Madam Speaker, I remember last night I was almost the last person to leave this chamber. Today I've been here since morning. So have and the other questions, senators. Uh, let me ask my question, Madam Speaker, with all respect. And the people who are asking questions in the previous session, they are the same people asking questions. Just tell me why I'm here. And then if we can just have them to ask questions, then we can watch like others at home. Uh, Senator, Senator Karungo Dangwa, uh, just uh, on a point of information, you have been in the House and that is, your leg that is a legitimate expectation of the people who brought you to Senate, that you should be in Senate attending to proceedings. Uh, you have been attending the proceedings and other Senators have also been attending the proceedings of this impeachment. And I believe all senators have an equal right to seek clarifications and seek questions. So we have used the board that has been uh, showing us the names of the prioritization. So I would urge you when you want to clarify, you always press your button early so that because uh, it uses, we use it as a guide on the speaker's side. But uh, having said that, uh, we will bring up more senators who have not uh, had a chance to ask the questions, but all are equally entitled. Senator, Senator Asige, yes. as the phone is making its way to the Thank you. secretariat desk. Thank you, Speaker. If that comment by Senator Thangwa was uh, directed at me, I have to assure him that yesterday I only spoke one time, so I'm not one of the ones who have spoken a lot last yesterday. Um, speaker, I want to speak on behalf of the struggling politicians, because I feel like I am one, whereby if I were to be missing 100,000 shillings in my M-Pesa, I would definitely, I have to admit, I would definitely notice immediately. And um, that's where my particular question will focus. Um, and I wanted to just engage um, the DG, if you would allow me. Uh, Mr. DG, could you kindly just clarify how you make M-Pesa transaction? Is it through the M-Pesa app? Yes. It's through the M-Pesa app? <coughs> yes. Oh, it is, okay. It is, so, Madam Speaker. Okay, great. So you are, you are somewhat tech savvy, um, then uh, that has been confirmed. I also want to just confirm the process through which you transact on M-Pesa, and maybe you'll uh, agree or, or disagree at the end. Number one, Speaker, I am um, I'm aware that when you use the M-Pesa app, you have to choose the person that you're sending money to, the recipient. And the next stage is to put in the amount that you want to send. And the next stage is to put in your PIN. And then there is a pop-up that comes which asks you to confirm that those details that you have input are correct before you either cancel or accept that transaction, whereby you would have seen the recipient's name pop up on that in Hakikisho in Swahili. And then once you have, if you said accept, if you confirm that those are the right details, speaker, you press accept, and then as another senator has said, you'll receive a transaction confirmation with the exact same details um, so that you can confirm that you have sent the correct amount to the correct person at said time. Now, with all of those different confirmation opportunities, I wanted to really clarify, because he uses the M-Pesa app, and you have to be tech savvy to use it. 
how did you not see those confirmation pop-ups the that came through the M-Pesa app for you to confirm whether you're sending the money to the right person. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I've already heard that, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, that I missed those pop-ups and they sent money knowing that uh, I've sent the money to the right person. I miss those ones you have named. I do not know how you send it. Mine is uh, getting the name and the number and then I send. So I miss that, Madam Speaker. Okay. Send it to Joyce Corrill. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. My question still hangs on the Embesa uh, transfers that uh, the witness uh, sent 100,000 to Lucy Waito, which uh, uh, was sent on 28, and it was reversed on that yet. That is barely two days later, uh, Madam Speaker. I wanted to know whether there was an agreement between the Deputy Governor and Lucy Waito. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, <coughs> there was no agreement between myself and Lucy Waito on anything unless uh, clarified. That's the way I got the question. There was no agreement. The position is send the money back and she had told me to reverse. That is the position at which we left it. Okay. Senator Mwini Haji Mohamed Faki. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mine is also on the same Impesa transaction. When you send the money on the, is it 28th? 28th yes, yes 28th. May, did you confirm that the money had gone? Yes, the money went. So, but you didn't confirm to whom it went. Is that what you're telling us? I didn't read that name and get to know that it is where I was sending the money to. That is what I'm saying, yes. Yes. So you confirmed that the money was sent to Lucy. Was it Lucy or? Lucy, Lucy. That same evening? That evening, yes, the money went to Lucy. That same evening? Yes. But it, could, it took her prompting for you to realize that it went to a wrong person. Yeah, I slept without noticing that the money had gone to the wrong person. So I, I yes. woke up the next day and this is when I came to this understanding. But it is your evidence that on the evening you sent the money, you confirm that it went to Lucy? No. It was erroneously sent to Lucy. That's what I'm saying. That's all. Yes. Senator Mbogwa Mugai, George. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Mr. Deputy Governor. I'm following up on the charges of abuse of office, and I want to refer you to your affidavit, paragraph 59, uh, A and B. You seem to suggest that your home is being used for official purposes without your permission. Sorry? You seem to suggest that your home is being used for official government offices without your permission. Is that true on point A? Paragraph 59 of the affidavit. Madam Speaker, can we go ahead with the question? So you seem to suggest that your home is being used for official government uh, business without your permission because you are saying your input was not sought for. Is that true? Madam Speaker, this is not referring to myself. I'm saying it's not my home that is used. Okay. Now, My home on has B, not been used by anyone 
for visual functions. Okay, on B, you suggest that the governor's office is being used for official government business. Is there any government uh, money which goes into the use of this office? Is there any money which is used for the, uh, for the government business which is being carried on in that office? Thank you. Madam Speaker, that I would not be able to confirm if government money is being used. The only response here is that uh, government business is being transacted in the governor's residence. Senator Onyonka Richard. Thank you, Madam, Madam Speaker. Uh, Dr. Munda, I, I, I have two follow-up questions. The question that you've answered about government business taking place, could you explain what that statement means? In other words, are you trying to say that each and every government transaction since the governor took over in Kizi County has actually been conducted, including cabinet, cabinet positions, including cabinet meetings, and you as a DG were holding cabinet meetings in the govern, governor's house. And if you can, I would hope you to explain what the government says in terms of where the governor or the president, which place should they operate from. The second issue, the question I want to bring you, Dr. Monda, Madam Asigi raised a very interesting question, but I thought, and I'm not on a fishing expedition, I thought you got confused. Do you know the difference between an Mpesa app and Mpesa Kawaida? Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I, may, I may be lost between the two. Yeah. I, 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 can you explain I, if you can? Lastly, this money that you sent erroneously, have you ever sent any other erroneous money to anybody at any one time? And did you get a reversal? And how do you claim that money back? Thank you. Madam Speaker, if, with your permission, I may start with the, the M-Pesa. <coughs> uh, I'm lost between the M-Pesa app and the M-Pesa by the Senator Unyonga what you call M-Pesa Kawaida. Uh, Madam Speaker, I may be on the Kawaida M-Pesa because I do not, have not heard the difference between the two. Uh, I will have to refer when I leave this, uh, this uh, Senate. Uh, <clears throat> and so, on the matter of reversal, what did you ask? And any other money other than this money to anybody else before this exercise started or even now? Yes, Madam Speaker, I've done. M-Pesa is a continuous process by everyone uh, of this era. And so I've sent and I've lost, sometimes I've lost the money. And sometimes when I'm able to call and get the money sent back, I have succeeded to get the money back. This happens all the time. Uh, and I think my considered opinion is that it is for that reason that the Savaricom decided to have uh, the, the two uh, uh, reversal and even sending back. Madam Speaker, <coughs> on the first question, the Honorable Senator has asked me to explain a little. All I know, once sworn into government, uh, we are expected to transact government business in designated areas, gazetted areas, such that the, the Senate will conduct business in the designated Senate, as an example, Madam Speaker and uh, this assembly. But in my case and the case, once we came into government after being sworn in, and uh, this was in the presence of uh, my super senator Richard Yonyonga, we did um, 
the swearing in. Just to guide you, we do not have any super senator. Okay. They are yeah. all senators. Uh, Madam Speaker, senators. I, I withdraw that and uh, replace it, replace Let's it with Senator Unyonga. Honorable Senator is the official title. <laughs> Can you continue with the answer? Yes, Proceed Mad on. Madam Speaker, once we were sworn in the previous governor's office by the former governor was of course available, but we did not occupy that space, including my space as a deputy governor, on the grounds that my governor will want to do renovations to those offices before we occupy them, and therefore, we had to start operating from the holding um, rooms of the Kisi Stadium. And we've remained in those um, holding rooms in the stadium until today as I speak here. Madam Speaker, if I were to be impeached by this motion, I wouldn't have stepped into the, the official gazette uh, um, governor's offices in Kisi as at now. And after a short while, Madam Speaker, at the stadium, my governor, His Excellency Mbarati, decided to start conducting government meetings in his own residence in Motonto village. And this has remained the position of the Kisi County government over many years without imputing um, any wrong motive, Madam Speaker. We have found ourselves in a situation where even the Judicial Service Commission visited Kisi and we were required to go to the rural home where we went and uh, we held that meeting th there and it was painful for me having the Judicial Service Commission conducting a, an official meeting in a private residency. Madam Speaker, this is the scenario in brief in Kisi. The CECs will find their way to that home every day. The, the chief officers the same, and the directors the same. Madam Speaker, at some point as I raised this matter, I started getting excluded from attending those meetings and without getting, and totally not getting information that there is any meeting going on anywhere where a deputy governor can also attend. That is the scenario in Kisi. I want to stop there, hoping I've answered the Honorable uh, Senator's question, Thank inviting you. this Senate to visit Kisi and uh, see by yourselves, Madam Speaker, that that's the scenario we are in, in thank Kisi you. County. Thank you, thank you. Senator Karungo will be the final one, then we'll take a direction on the remaining. We have about 17, and we'll have to take a direction on how we go about it. Meantime, Senator Karungo, very quickly. And thank you. Uh, mine are very brief, uh, Madam Speaker. And I would start by asking the Deputy Governor, uh, Mr. Deputy Governor, why would your brother be so bitter with you that he would want you to lose your seat and go live with him at your father's house, at your father's farm? The second question, yesterday I asked Dennis a question and I asked him if he got a job after giving the 800,000 bribe, would he tell anybody, would he go to the police? And his answer was, no, I wouldn't have gone to any police. I would just be enjoying my job. Now, in that line of thinking, would I say, Lucy Waheto, would I be right to say, Lucy Waheto also came here because probably you did not give him all the money that he wanted. Probably you did not give her all the money that she wanted. Out of the 800, maybe she wanted 400. You gave her 100,000. Then there were two days of, are you sending more? Are you sending more? And then if you're not sending more, I'm going to refund the money. And that is exactly what happened. Would I be right to say so? 
Madam Speaker, I will start with that last question to say no, the Honorable Senator will not be right to say so uh, because we have not had a discussion with Lucy Waido beyond the erroneous transaction of money. Um, the other one is about my brother and I've said it's a sad scenario that the entire, the entire happening is simply intended to drag my name through the mud. Um, that's all I would want to say, Madam Speaker, that my brother is in that pain of not supporting me in the past in the elections, but I've continued to win. And uh, after the elections, my brother has not been happy, and he believes the campaigns continue beyond the time we were elected. And so you'll wish that I'm impeached for him to feel better, because I would have lost the seat I won against his wishes that I don't. You refer to the Kisi elections, you will see many clips showing how my brother campaigned hard against me, but then I flawed them, and those who are, who are flawed will always be looking for grounds to continue fighting. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Honorable Senators, uh, we have now finished the slots that we had allocated, but I have about 17 requests for Senators who need clarifications. We have to take a direction because we have five witnesses who still have to give evidence, be cross-examined, be re-examined. So, so I, what is your point of order? You do the points of order. I want us to take a direction as a house, whether we add three slots, three slots, both majority and minority leaders are here. Yes. Senator Methu and then Senator Osotsi. Senator Otsotsi, meantime, raise your point of order. Resume your seat. I invited you to use the dispatch box. You move first. Ma Madam Speaker, I think you directed that uh, Mr. Monda's phone be checked to confirm the phone list attached on the documents. I think we need to dispense with that uh, because um, the document raised a lot of concerns uh, from the members and from the council as to its authenticity. And uh, also uh, understanding the computer misuse and cybercrime act, particularly section 23, that talks about false publication of computer information. So I think that would be a very crucial aspect to deal with before we proceed. So, see, I give the direction. I had um, directed that the phone on the page which has been downloaded and attached the documentation be presented to the clerk and Senator Cheradigi, who had raised that issue was to be there to see that page He's not in the house, so I'm holding it. It will still be done. Uh, what is your point of order, Senator Medu? So I've given direction. It will still be checked. Uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, I, since you had already given direction that you shall take four from each side, I think uh, it is fair that we stick to that direction that you had given. But I would be of the proposal, Honorable Speaker, because we have, um, uh, uh, I think, five more witnesses that for the rest of us who are on that dashboard, because I know I'm one of them, that you give us priority in terms of uh, getting clarification from the other witnesses that will be coming, so that then we can be able to avoid the question that had been raised by Senator Karongo Dango of uh, the same people uh, speaking over, uh, over, over and over, 
that uh, when we get the next witness, then we can get another eight, then we, uh, we remain with a few more others so that everybody can be able to speak to this matter. Mm. Senator Hamida, on a point of order only, then I give a direction. We take consensus in... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to request if you could give us, the few of us who have not talked, at least more time, at least um, give us 20 minutes for each side so that at least we can proceed. Because he's the main uh, witness, then at least we have not exhausted our questions kindly. Uh, 20 minutes for each side would be too much to for both sides. Honorable Senators, we either take a few more or proceed on with the witnesses and give priority to the Senators who have not clarified anything in the next batch. Senator Mohammed. Yeah, Madam Speaker, I think the direction which was given was that uh, the DG side had uh, three hours to present their case together with the cross-examination and conclusion. Maybe is that now, has not now changed because uh, I've seen we did about uh, two hours in the morning and I've done another two hours now. And should, uh, we, the way we are managing our time, I don't think we are going to conclude this matter. In, in That's definitely the before concern. Before midnight. That is definitely yes. the concern. I'll so hear. you need to give direction, Madam Speaker, yes. uh, so that we know uh, the time frames of what we are doing. Because yesterday there was a time frame which was presented and accepted by uh, the, the plenary. And, I now, and now we are digressing from that time frame. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mohammed. I'll take one more point of order, then I give a direction from Senator Roba. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, considering uh, the Deputy Governor is the key person and uh, the issues that uh, have been raised around, uh, you know, his removal from office, I think it's only fair if even if you limit the time, the senators that want to raise some questions to uh, the deputy governor be given, even if you limit the time uh, to one one question uh, in, in that regard. Thank you. Honorable senators, in view of the time constraint, but noting that uh, this is a very key witness and the impeachment is on the deputy governor, I will give an opportunity to three senators on this side, three senators on the majority side, a total of six senators, and each should take only one minute. Beyond one minute, I will request the clerk to switch off the microphone so that we do, and, uh, we do it under 10 minutes or 12 minutes and move on to the other witnesses. Senator Enoch. Uh, that, that's, that's well guided, in the speak, Madam Speaker. But then, in the same breath, then you should also require of the witness uh, to also respond decisively to questions without expounding on anything. Um, Honorable Senators, I want to request and we guide that even your questions be precise, don't give a narration or two paragraphs of a background, just ask a specific question, and the witness is duly guided to give specific, precise answers to the questions that are asked. If it's a question of yes or no, just say yes or no. And I will now request uh, Senator Seki to ask the question. He's not there. Senator Boni Halwale. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Deputy Governor Robert Monda is my friend. In fact, I'm the only one in this house who was a colleague of his in the 10th Parliament. Listening to you, my old friend and colleague, your fate is going to turn on your word against the word of your own witnesses. Young Dennis Misati has told us that and proved that he gave you 500 million. 500,000, you have refused. Your word against his. Joseph Mesati 
has said that you, you went to him for money, you are broke. You have refused your word against his. Gladys Amingo has a document here where she demonstrates that you are doing business with her. You have refused her word against yours. And finally, Lucy Wahito has demonstrated... What's your question, Senator Boni? It's over. It's one minute. Page 264, that she... You are innocent by telling the house, do we believe you? Witness. <coughs> Madam Speaker, <coughs> to answer these questions, <coughs> to answer these questions uh, from my friend, uh, the Senator, uh, Mr. Misati, as What's your point of order, Senator Wakoli? Use the dispatch box, Senator. Honorable Speaker, is it in order for my senior brother, Mwishmua Boni Kalwale, to already show signals that he's already making decisions and judging the innocent doctor without the due process coming to a conclusion, Honorable Speaker? Let us be impartial as Honorable Senators and allow the defense and the accused to come on board and elaborate themselves. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, the witness, the witness, following the point of order, let me, let me give a direction. The witness can concentrate on the question that was posed in the last sentence. Whether you should be believed or the other witnesses should be believed. Just that bit. Madam Speaker, there have been a mention of several names of witnesses who have been here. Dennis Misati, again, is the word of his father, Joseph Misati. My affirmation is that Joseph Misati and myself are on the same page. And so we have not pulled in different directions, and I hope my uh, friend Senator is listening to me. So Joseph Misati are talking different language with the son. And it's not me who has said we are not talking the same language with Joseph Misati. Misati refunded my money, and that's our position, the two of us. Uh, Gladys Aminga, I have not deviated that I gave Gladys Aminga the contract to deliver building material to my home. That's the position I've taken, and I, I, and, uh, and I paid, I paid uh, what was due to her. Uh, Lucy, uh, Lucy the Wasco uh, MD, we are in, on the same page that uh, I sent money to her erroneously and she refused the money to me. There's no more that she has said about me other than that she has two statements. One, she says, I said nothing when we talked on phone on the same money, and on the update she said something else. So I've not deviated from what all these witnesses have said. I have a position about them. Thank you. Senator Hamida. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Bonadigi, uh, the young man, Dennis, really broke down. They lost the family uh, business, and the wife also had a miscarriage. Are you really conscious, is your conscience clear that uh, there was no fraud by promising this young man um, any or, or by exhorting money from him 
to get a job. That is one, just the second one. There has been uh, so well, much... Leave it at in one question, Senator Hamida, for this last session. Just, just one question. Just Thank one you. more, Madam Speaker. Leave it at one question. Everybody needs a little Thank chance Thank you, Madam Speaker. So then, <clears throat> Dennis Misati uh, broke down. I was here yesterday, and I saw it. But again, Dennis Misati was on record that he has not talked to me any one time about the job he was looking for. The, he got all the story about the job from his father. The father was here today morning. There is no way I can know that Dennis sold a business or suffered any loss, yet the connection, the only link between me and Dennis is the father who has witnessed today in the morning that he's not privy to any business lost, nor Dennis having money to come and give me as a bribe, or he was calling it something else, not inducement, something. And, uh, and, and so I cannot speak for Dennis Misati, he can only speak about his father through whom he indicated he got every communication from me. The Senator Derito John Kenya. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, in the county, DG is number two in command. Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, he is telling us that he sent money, I rose near three, to a person he has saved as CEO, who is a junior officer in terms of command. Madam Speaker, what I'm trying to understand, how was it so hard for that officer to reverse or to send the money immediately which ended up taking two days. I had listened to him saying, the officer said he could not reverse the money immediately because he was in the airport. Then from the airport he entered, she, okay, yeah, she entered a very serious meeting. Madam Speaker, I am still not understanding. That's the only part I'm not getting. I need clarity. DG. Madam Speaker, that is very true. Lucy is a junior officer in the, the the company where she works, a company created between the Kisi County and the Nyamira County. And Madam Speaker, she works under Board of Management. I am the Deputy Governor. If I indeed I was to look for jobs from the Board, <coughs> sorry, I then should have been able to reach the Board of Management because that's where the marks for anyone looking for a job is awarded. It's not at the CEO. So, Madam Speaker, this assertion, to me, I find it far from what it should be. I want to talk to the management board. Madam Speaker. Can you make your answers precise and short? That's what we guided. I stop. Um, he, he had mentioned, the senator had mentioned something about the selling of the money. And Madam Speaker, I have, have already mentioned here that from the records that are in these panels that are before the Senate, I realized that Madam Lucy Waido transacted, used the same money that she was supposed to reverse immediately on the 29th morning. And so, even if she was to reverse the money, she didn't have the same money to reverse to me until the 30th when she finally reversed the money and on uh, some kind of loan. And if that loan we call what? In, uh, in the M-Pesa. Uh, if that Felisa was there on the same 29th, then why did she leave herself to be below 100,000, which she was referred to me? I hope I've responded. Senator Betty. Is it 
Betty Moteto, is it Beth? It's working. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, mine is just a quick one. Uh, you said that uh, the 100,000 you are sending to Gladys was for services rendered to you on transport. Uh, have you brought any evidence to show that uh, there's either an invoice or uh, a demand notice, either on phone or written to you, demanding that, uh, that payment, please? Madam Speaker, um, I don't have those documents, but from the statement given by Gladys, she is confirming that she transported the materials as my affidavit was also indicating. So we are in agreement with Gladys that I, she transported materials for me, and that is in record in the documents before this house. Senator Mudigi. Asante, Madam, Spe Madam Speaker. Yangu ni machache bwana deputy governor we ni mwenye county eh, na unajua sina sote zile siko kisi eh, mambo ya pesa kutumia mtu na kurundishie hiyo kwa mimi ni vitu imevanyika kwa muda mrefu na bora pesa ilirundi lakini mambo ya hizi pesa zingine nataka kukuuliza bwana deputy governor eh, wakati tulikuja kisi juu ya wafanyikazi kulikuwa na shine nikiwa mmoja wa lipa wafanyikazi wa lepa unajua ile mambo yote iko kisi ambayo ni mzito sana mkafuta watu lakini nataka kuuliza hakuna njia ndio hii mambo isifike katika uh, county ya, ya, ya kisi na pia ifike hapa hakuna file hapo mbeleni ungejua file utafanya uweze kumaliza hii maneno kabla haijafika hapa pahali tumefika asanti madam speaker Proceed. madam speaker this matter has been speeded up very quickly by the, I will call it my CEO, is part and parcel to this movement, this impeachment, so that I'm gotten rid of because of the issues I'm already raising on the management of the county. And so uh, it could have been managed if we sat together as the leadership. But I've got my CEO who will also determine whether that kind of meeting can take place or not. Senator Okoiti, Andrew Mutata. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Your Excellency, Deputy Governor, I've just one small concern that is disturbing me. Yesterday, a video was played here of a very, very poor lady who makes her living, who acts out her living by selling mutura, accusing you of having taken money from her. And there were many others who came up. But I'm taking that particular one because it's the one that seems to have evidence that it was made at the public participation, uh, during a public participation forum. What would be your response, or did you, did you have a chance to respond to that allegation? Because for me, for somebody poor being claiming that you took so much from her is a very, very painful experience for me. And that, for me, is one thing that's going to guide my decision-making. Madam Speaker, the clips that were played in this house, the Honorable house you will notice that all of it ran around the bursary that I have been soliciting for bribes to give people bursaries. Bursaries in counties have uh, committees that run bursaries and not the deputy governor. Madam Speaker, you get a report of Kisi. The last bursary given was in the last financial year was 3,000 shillings per student. How, what kind of sense would it make if you get a parent bribing a deputy governor 12,000, 20,000 to get 3,000? Does it make economic sense? Does it look like there is something happening? Madam Speaker, these clips played here were all choreographed to simply implicate me, where they have been indicated to have been taken.
you will get in the same report you have. For instance, Masimba, I will quote Masimba. Masimba is the headquarter for Masimba Ward. In the report, it's indicated when the team doing public participation reached there, there was nobody to attend the public participation. But at the end of the report and the clip played here, Madam Speaker, I realized that there is a gentleman who is a border border rider, whom I know in person, whom we have taken food together in my house, claiming to have come to my ho to, to, to me to get bursaries. Madam Speaker, I've never sat anywhere in a committee releasing bursaries to the beneficiaries. I've never. This was simply meant to argument the claim that Monda takes bribes and that is what was done. If you look at the timing it precise. of keep the it public precise. participation, yes. I want to guide you once again. You keep to the question and give short, precise answers to the questions. Okay. So rest it there. Senator Paris is a final question, and then we move on to the next witness. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to put it to the DG that his friend uh, Joseph Misati had uh, said that he's financially struggling. And in that case, could this be the reason why the DG is soliciting money in order to assist in the job placement of uh, Misati's son, Dennis? Madam Speaker, I've responded to that question earlier severally, that uh, that affirmment was generally done by Mr. Misati that uh, Politicians have their challenges in, uh, in terms of resources and the kind of work they do. He also then said he will expect that I'm also one of those who are suffering in terms of resources. No, Ms. Msati did not speak for me that I'm asking for money from anyone and I've not asked for money from anyone to solve the challenges that are financial for politicians, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senators. I think, unfortunately, we have to move on because we have five other witnesses who have not given evidence, and the Senators will not found time now. We will have an opportunity in the next bunch.